Right now, President Trump goes off on the impeachment process as public testimony comes to an end. And getting ready for the 2019 gun deer hunt starting now in less than 24 hours. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. First at noon, we have breaking news. Officers are responding right now to a report of a person possibly with a gun at a building on Madison's east side. Police say the possibly armed man is in an apartment on Few Street. This is a live picture. As you can see, the city's SWAT team is at the scene, and our crew on the scene says that they can hear officers yelling for someone to come out. The Working Draft Beer Company on nearby Wilson Street is also closed, according to a Facebook post, until a police situation nearby is resolved. And earlier today, a heavy police presence on the north side of the city. This is the same area as the shots fired incident from a couple of nights ago on Coolidge Street. Wednesday night, several shell casings were found on the street and two homes were hit by gunfire. No injuries reported then. We don't have confirmation yet as to what today's incident is about. Let's get now at your first alert to weather forecast. Meteorologist Chris Reese is in the Weather Center with a weekend outlook. Chris? Yeah, we're looking towards the weekend. The good news is I do think things are going to be dry. We started to clear the skies out after the cloud cover that we did have earlier on this morning. Visible cloud track really shows how that cloud cover just eroded away. And here's a live look outside right now showing you the sun, but it is indeed chilly. 29 degrees in Madison right now. Thankfully, the winds are calm, but a lot of folks are still into the 20s. The Dells at 27 right now. Watertown at 29. You get down towards Janesville. That's where that temperature is right at the freezing mark at 32. Still, high resolution Doppler does remain free of any rain or snow. I do think all areas are going to be remaining clear as we go through the rest of this afternoon. Look for that sunshine to continue. We'll see those temperatures top out right around 37. I think that sunshine is going to help us warm up just a bit. But beyond the weekend, of course, we are focused on Thanksgiving. Mark, we do have an alert day for a potential winter storm. I'll be breaking that down and what we're looking at, along with what we know and what we don't coming right. up in Maine weather. We'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you, Chris. A Metrolink train hit a motor home, causing a fire to erupt on the tracks in southeast Los Angeles County early this morning. California's Orange County Line 681 to Los Angeles was brought to a sudden halt today after colliding with the vehicle. No passengers on the train were injured, but it is not clear if anyone was in the motorhome. Firefighters extinguished the fire, but the flames destroyed the motorhome and damaged the front of the train. And some incredible video today from the UK. Firefighters battled a massive blaze that all but destroyed a beachfront hotel in the town of Eastbourne today. Multiple fire engines were on the scene as flames engulfed all floors of the Claremont Hotel. The fire department said no one had been injured and that all the guests and employees had been accounted for. It remained unclear what sparked the blaze. President Trump spent nearly an hour professing his innocence during a wide-ranging phone call on Fox and Friends this morning. This comes as the public hearings have wrapped up and Democrats are moving into the next phase of the impeachment inquiry. Nicole Killian reports. Adjourned. No more public hearings are scheduled and a vote on articles of impeachment is expected before the end of the year. But President Trump tells Fox and Friends he thinks he'll win that vote in the House. You expect an impeachment vote, you expect to get impeached, and would you say you said you embrace the no, idea? I don't of it. expect it. You Actually, don't expect don't. it? You I, don't I expect Democrats going to vote no. for this? I think it's very hard for them to impeach you when they have absolutely nothing. Democrats say the evidence in the impeachment inquiry shows President Trump was pursuing his own political interest with Ukraine, pressing the country's new president to investigate 2016 election interference and former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter. Withholding of recognition in that White House meeting, the withholding of military aid to an ally at war, that is beyond anything Nixon did. The White House and Republicans are already preparing for a trial in the Senate, and so is the president. Frankly, I want a trial. You know, I could think I could have it. You want a trial? The president met with GOP senators at the White House Thursday, including frequent critics Mitt Romney of Utah and Maine Susan Collins. When it gets to the Senate, we're going to do it. We're going to do it right now. Everybody's going to have their day in court. And the president's allies are taking up his push to investigate the Bidens. Senate Judiciary Chairman Lindsey Graham is requesting documents from the State Department about Joe Biden's interactions with Ukraine while he was vice president. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill.
And CBS News has learned Republicans are leaning toward limiting a Senate trial to two weeks if the president is impeached. We have a couple of local teams playing in state football championships today at Camp Randall. DeForest is playing right now against Menasha. And then starting in about an hour, Wanakee will face off against Brookfield East at 1 o'clock in the Division II title game. We'll have highlights tonight on News 3 now at 4, 5, and 6. Around the state, five football players at UW-Eau Claire are suspended from the team and are under investigation by the school because of racist messages sent on Snapchat. They included a photo showing a KKK cross burning and comments about a campus group called Black Male Empowerment. Jalen Thomas is vice president of that organization. He says he finds the incident hurtful. These young men are adults, you know, they're juniors in college, so they know right from wrong. Um, I really don't care if it was a joke or not. There's a lot of sensitive things that happened in our country's history that you just don't touch on. Thomas says he doesn't view the campus as racist, but says there's still progress to be made as far as the university's racial climate is concerned to make, quote, all students feel comfortable. The incident was one of the le at least four racist incidents at college campuses across the country in just the past week. And the deer hunting season starts tomorrow. The DNR expecting a large turnout for those participating. The season starts just before dawn and will run until just after sunset on December 1st. And for the first time in 10 years, hunters will be able to take does in every county in the state. The department is also asking hunters to test for CWD. Well, there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today's recipe is inspired by the very first Thanksgiving feast that took place in 1621. It proves that some things never go out of style. If we were to look back at what was served at the first Thanksgiving in 1621, we'd find a completely different spread than what most of us serve today. Back then, you could count on there being some kind of wild fowl and, of course, something made from corn. But rather than kernel corn, 
it was in the form of grain, which was likely made into bread or porridge. To make something a little more up to date, what do you say we add a corn souffle to this year's Turkey Day lineup? All we do is combine a couple cans of whole kernel corn, or you can use frozen if you prefer, along with some cream corn, a bit of sugar, flour, milk, and a few beaten eggs. After mixing everything together, we pour it into a baking dish and pop it in the oven. This is a whole lot easier than what the pilgrims had to do. Thanks to our supermarket shortcuts, we can throw this together in just minutes. When your souffle is all done and sitting next to all the other holiday go-alongs, get ready for lots of oohs and ahs. It's no wonder that a side dish like this has stood the test of time. To get this easy peasy recipe for what we call Pilgrim Corn Souffle, check out our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found an updated classic way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. Still ahead, a preview of next week's Black Friday and if shoppers are expected to choose brick and mortar or online. And a look at your forecast as we enter into the weekend. That's coming up next. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issue and call the hotline. Volunteers will help you with any consumer complaints. The number is 608-270-2833. This service is open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. Well, Tesla's cyber truck reveal takes an unexpected turn, and the mall is still king when it comes to holiday shopping. Diane King-Hall has more in today's Money Watch report. Stock started the session higher after three days of losses. Wall Street was optimistic following comments from President Trump speaking on Fox and Friends saying a trade deal with China is very close. 
Elon Musk unveiled Tesla's futuristic-looking Cybertruck yesterday. Musk said the sci-fi-style electric pickup has a bulletproof stainless steel shell and 500-mile range. It was all show and tell during Tesla's live demonstration with one hiccup. The armor glass window cracked. The truck will start at just under $40,000. Getting bumped from a flight is certainly rough, but some airlines are more guilty than others. According to travel site upgraded points, Spirit and Frontier Airlines are the worst offenders. Passengers on those carriers are twice as likely to be bumped. Spirit bumped more than 1,500 flyers for every 100,000 travelers in 2018. Frontier, a little more than 1,200. Delta bumped the fewest last year with 22 bumps for every 100,000 travelers. And shoppers are still choosing bricks over clicks when it comes to checking off holiday lists. A survey from Retail Me Not finds that 80% of shoppers will go to physical stores. But Black Friday and Cyber Monday shopping are both projected to be down this year, with people expected to spend 783 bucks versus a little more than 800 last year. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King-Hall. Thank you, Diane. At the noon hour, the Dow Industrials up 92 points, the NASDAQ up 10, and the S&P 500 gaining a little over six. Let's check in now with Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke. She is in the radio barn on this Friday. Hi, Pam. Good afternoon. Uh, keeping an eye on that football game and watching the traffic because I think the deer hunters are getting ready to head to the head to the woods. You're not going to be tracking in snow this year, boys, but it does look like you're going to have plenty of mud out there. Just another a quick reminder, there's a lot of standing corn that's out in those farm fields. Our farmers are going to work this weekend to try to get that off, so don't be surprised if you've got combine noise and truck action on some of those fields. Uh, please have those conversations with those landowners before you get there, and obviously, think safety. If we've got farmers trying to harvest corn and we've got deer hunters out there trying to make their mark, we just need to make sure we're communicating. Make sure if you're going onto those farm fields with permission. Uh, pay attention to fences. If you go through one, close it because there may be livestock there that might otherwise get out. Talking about uh, congratulations for Daphne Holterman from Rosie Lanes in Watertown. She is uh, the latest appointee to the Cattlemen's Beef Research and Promotion Board. She'll serve a three-year term on behalf of Wisconsin beef and dairy producers. Also, congratulations to about 27 of our Wisconsin farmer-led watersheds across the state, picking up $750,000 in state grant monies in our area. That's including Sock Soil and Water Improvement Group, Dodge County, and two groups working on the Sugar River, Lafayette Egg Stewardship Group, and the Yahara Pride folks. Markets today in Chicago are trending higher, specifically when it comes to our soybeans, the dairy markets are very quiet. Barrel and black cheese, again unchanged on a Friday going into the weekend. Double A butter down a penny and a half at 202 and a half per pound. And like I, you can see on the screen, fluid milk, milk market's doing pretty good. So I'm going to start up the black uh, truck, farm truck, and head my way north just so I can see what goes on in the <laughs> fields and farms this weekend, Mark. All right. Well, have a great weekend. Thank you. See, See you later. Monday. All right, let's head over to the weather center now. Speaking of the weekend, Chris Reese has your forecast. Yeah, that's right. And I think we're going to end up seeing a pretty beautiful weekend around here. The sunshine did return this afternoon. It sticks around this afternoon. We'll stay mild and probably dry through the weekend as well. So that gives us time to focus on the winter storm threat that we do have for early next week, just as we begin to travel for Thanksgiving. Let's start with what's out there right now. And this is Doppler track. We are free. We're dry. There's no rain nor snow. Not here in the Madison area at all. We're all clear in Wanake and Cross Plains as well. We go down towards Stoughton. Things do still remain dry there. We're colder though. 29 is our temperature at the noon time hour. That's with the sunshine. Winds are calm though, so we're not really concerned about much of a wind chill or anything like that. 28 in the Dells, 32 as we work our way down towards Janesville. We head over towards Watertown. That's where it's 30. Mineral Point also at the freezing mark. Boscobel is the warm spot at 33 degrees right now. Let's put this into motion though. We go through the rest of this afternoon. I do think with that sunshine, we may be able to warm up towards 37 for that. That high some spots will be just a little bit cooler on the outside of that clear skies and falling temperatures will certainly be the theme as we head into tonight. Look for an overnight low right around 24. But something also happens overnight tonight. Pay attention to those winds now coming out of the south and west folks. That is the kind of wind that 
likes to warm things up. So here we are, 12 o'clock. This is lunchtime on Saturday. The temperature is at 38. By the time we get you into Saturday afternoon, 3.30, that's when our temperatures begin to make it into the 40s. So now we're at 42, and again, there's no cloud cover. So I do think we see that sunshine for your Saturday. 6 o'clock Sunday morning, temperatures will be right around 30. By the time we get you towards 12 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, we're at 42. I think we have a chance to see the mid 40s as we had into Sunday. Here starts to come the cloud cover though as we work our way in from the north and west. So if you want to put up your holiday decorations, folks, do it right now. This is the prime weekend to do it. We're going to be dry. We're going to see some sunshine along with some warmer temperatures and because what we're watching into early next week. We'll see some cloud cover as we head into Sunday. But then Monday also still dry. Watch what begins to happen as we head into your Tuesday. This is Tuesday at 10 a.m. This is just one model, but what it's showing is the starting of a winter storm. By the time we get you towards that evening commute on Tuesday, we could be could be in the midst of a winter storm throughout southern Wisconsin, but it'll be fast moving. We get you towards 1030 and that wraps on out of here pretty quickly, but we still have a lot of uncertainty. We don't know the exact path of the storm or its impacts in southern Wisconsin, and honestly, we're still trying to figure out whether or not this will be rain or snow, but we do know there will be a storm nearby on Tuesday that's going to be fast moving, and no matter where that is across the upper Midwest, it will have impacts to our travel. So stay tuned to later newscasts and social media and your app as we continue to update that. We're going to let you guys know what to expect. In the meantime, we do have alert days for Tuesday and Wednesday headed into Thanksgiving, though I do think we'll be a little bit milder, but we're watching this very closely with the dry forecast and the in the front term, mm -hmm. that's that's just what we're focusing on for now. Enjoy the weekend. We'll, yes, we'll absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right, Chris. Still ahead at noon, Dane County Humane Society's Marissa DeGroot has a special Friday edition of our Pet of the Week. We'll meet this gal coming up.
Rivers of the group from the Dane County Humane Society is here. Welcome to you. Hi. Who do we have this week? Oh, we've got the beautiful Buffy here. Buffy? And she is a three-year-old pit bull terrier mix. She's not a vampire slayer. Nope, no. Nope. <laughs> A heart slayer, maybe. Look at this girl. Look at so um, she's from down south. Yep. So she actually originally came from a shelter down south, and she was adopted. She was brought back because Buffy loves kitties. Okay. She loves kitties a little too, too much, much okay. and she was chasing the kitties around the house. So now we're looking for a home uh, for Buffy, kitty free. With kitty free. <laughs> yeah. <yes>. Other dogs. <laughs> Yes, yeah, she does love other dogs. I think as long as you're doing a nice low intro, I think Buffy would be really happy with other pups in the house. And she was mothering another dog at the shelter? Yep, she was originally kenneled with another dog and they got along so well. So I think, yeah, as long as she's getting a nice low intro, I think she's gonna do well in a lot of different households. Um, sometimes she can be a little shy when you first meet her, uh, but give her some time to warm up and she is so funny. She'll run around the yard and get the zoomies. Oh, really? um, and then just completely fall asleep in our office <laughs> And you know she's asleep because she snores so loud. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Yeah. You like that toy? Be yeah, a big fan of toys and big fan of people. And treats. Mm -hmm. And treats. <laughs> so three years old, she's pretty young. Yep, still pretty young. So she is looking for a family that can stay pretty active with her. Now this is full size. She's not going to get any bigger, obviously, at three. Yep, she's one of these kind of low rider pities that uh, is just going to stay kind of small. Oh, she, oh, she looks a butt scratch. Ooh, is that the good spot, <laughs> darling? <laughs> That's a good spot right there. Yes. Right there. All right, you got a big event coming up this weekend? Yep, so Saturday, you can get a head start on that holiday shopping by heading over to Mounds over on Stoughton Road. From 11 to 1, we're going to have Madison firefighters out there. They're going to be selling that uh, 2020 Madison firefighters calendar that benefits mm -hmm. Dane County Humane Society, and you can get it signed by some of the stars. Well, that'd be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So that's Saturday. Yep, 11 to 1. Uh, tomorrow. All right. Last week. Oh, last week we had the beautiful Rose, and she did get adopted. We had uh, found a lot of great homes for kitties uh, this last week. She was a senior. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm glad she got a home. Mm -hmm. She was so. So pretty. <laughs> All right, let's get this guy a home here, or get this girl a home here. Yeah. You want that toy? Yeah, I get that. Oh, yeah, she's going to make a great, a great pet for somebody. Oh, she is. All right, if you're interested in Ruby, are all the other animals available? It is Ruby, right? Buffy. Buffy, that's right. <laughs> or Ruby. <Yeah. laughs> Go to giveshelter.org. 838-0413 is the number to call Marissa. Thank you. Here's one final check of your forecast. We see that sunshine sticking around as we head through the rest of this afternoon. Temperatures should warm up uh, several more degrees into the mid and upper 30s for those highs. It's 40s Saturday and Sunday, even into Monday. We'll have a winter storm possibility Tuesday into Wednesday. All right, Chris, thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here at 4. Have a great afternoon.